What is it you want from your irons? Is it forgiveness, feel, help with the launch, shape the ball, small profile, a bit of bulk and mass to give you confidence? Well, TaylorMade have got seven different irons for sale right now. And what I want to do is examine all of those things, all of those differences, and possibly point you in the right direction as what might be best for you. Yeah, seven different irons to choose from. That includes the limited edition Tiger Woods iron. Where do you start? Well, I'm gonna do my best to break them down. We're gonna look, I've brought three clubs, sort of one from each category. Out here on the fair, we've got sort of short iron, long iron, and mid iron. And I'll try and give you my thoughts, at least, on how they differ, if there is a difference at all, and which one you should be considering and why. That's a better effort. In fact, I could go in. Oh, nearly hit the flag. Right, a little bit of chip in there with the pitching wedge of the sim, just trying to get an idea what kind of feel you get from this club. And we'll talk about it in there a little bit later. But first of all, budget is obviously a major part of any buying decision. And uh, I'm going to throw up the prices of each of these products. So starting from the sim right the way up to the Tiger Woods uh, limited edition iron. Take that one out of the equation because that's a, 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 a sort of not the norm, if you like, but the bulk product from SIM through to P730. What surprised me is there's very little difference in terms of the price. That was a big surprise. So I think if you're in the market for a set of irons, then in this case, when you go to TaylorMade, budget is not the thing because if you're going to spend 800 odd quid, you might as well spend 900 odd quid because these irons have got very little to split them in terms of the price. And I was a bit surprised, to be honest with you. Right, so you get down the short end of the bag, and I think this is where there's some noticeable differences on a number of levels. Uh, number one being feel, and number two being the sort of size and mass behind the ball. And I think this can play a major part in your decision making. You've got down the blade end, so P760, P730, uh, the Tiger Woods blade. Pure feel, pure forge, definitely in the 730s and the Tiger Woods blade. Um, You've then got into that middle iron, that combo iron, if you like, of the P790, where again, it's forged to a degree. It's not true sense of the word, but it's forged to a degree. And then you've got the sim. They've each got a feel, which I think is acceptable, but without doubt for me, if you're choosing down to feel, then you're down to that blade end, but it's the profile bit that's gonna differ for you. And sat behind the ball, this type of uh, address for this type of shot, it's gonna be a major difference. And the control element for me, once again, goes back down to that blade style, which really would be, for this type of shot, what I'd be choosing to play. However, yet again, that P790 just sort of has that sort of nice balance between the two. And, and if you see the difference between the 790 and of the... Uh, I'm even having to turn them upside down to see which is which. There's very little. And, um, yeah, it's... But for me, if I was choosing one of the three clubs and I had to make up and down from here, then uh, I'd be choosing that one. And if it goes in, I'll be buying it. There's a P760, so for me, again, a major part of the decision-making process is what is you like to see down that short end of the bag. That's not a bad start, it's right on the flag. Sit down, ball. Go in there. Wow. It's a P790, totally different ball flight. Again, coming right down on the flag, I'm on fire here. And sit. Oh, slightly heavy, that's the final ball. Let's see what that does. That just grabs that back end, I don't know whether you've seen it. Right, we've looked at the short end of the bag and we've talked about the size and profile that might appeal to you on the iron. Like I said, for me, I like that uh, for the shorter game, for the sort of wedges, nine irons, eight irons, seven irons. I can handle that shorter profile, that thinner top line. But it's then when you go down to the other end of the bag, then it's the same thing, but maybe the opposite in terms of what you prefer. So confidence requires, you're talking about five irons, four irons, and you might want to see a little bit more bulk and mass behind the ball to give you that confidence. So when you look at the four iron in the likes of the P760, the 730s, the Tiger Woods blade, they become ultra thin. And at that point, you really are questioning your ability to make sure you can find that center 
uh, of that club fee. So there's a bit of doubt creeps in. You've then got the mass and bulk of the uh, of the sim range. And again, so now we're starting to go away from the, the, the reasons we chose or would have chose perhaps to have that smaller profile in the shorter irons. Everything about the sim, everything about the P790 is that bulk and mass, that bit of power that's injected into the shots that you feel as though you're getting some assistance whether you are or whether you're not, that bigger club head sort of suggests that you are at least in the mindset. So for me, you get swayed away now from, and this is where the sort of contradiction is, and this almost need for a mixed set, because for me, like I said, I'd much rather see the bulkier club at address for the likes of these type of shots. And straight away, I'm putting that four iron back down, and we'll go to the, uh, we'll go to the, the P790, which again, to me, decent top line not massively uh, bulky in terms of its profile and sort of gives you that confidence to be uh, decent ball flight slightly down the left hand side again maybe just a little bit off them bottom grooves and you wonder what the difference would have been if I'd have hit the same strike with that P760 I've got a feeling it might have done quite as good in fact, let's just put that to the test. It's no use me saying what I think might have happened. Let's hit the P760. This is a four iron. Oh, and do you know what? I've absolutely pured it. Absolutely pured it. And we should get the ball flight like, picking up on a back camera. Totally different strike, a much better strike out the middle. And once again, that shows that age old thing. It doesn't matter what you've got in your hand, strike is key. The difference between the two, I chose the P790 in terms of confidence at address. And then I pick up the P760 and absolutely button one. Let's put that theory to the test and well done. Okay, so at this point of the video, uh, first of all, can you put down in the comments below, what brand of iron do you play? And also perhaps which out of the range of the tailor-made irons that I've shown you, that you've seen, which did you choose? Right, so a quick look at what sort of makes these clubs sort of different in terms of how they've been put together. So you start off down that sort of sim end, a uh, lot wider sole, a lot thicker top line, uh, a lot more ability to shove the CG further back to help with those sort of launch conditions for you. Um, we've got that speed bridge in there. It's more of a cavity back style club. You then move into that P790 range and it's that sort of one piece molded club, speed foam injected. It's a forged club as they say, but not in the true sense of the word in my opinion. And then you go to P760, which is an interesting one for me because what they do in P760, some of you might know this, uh, others won't, uh, is from pitching wedge through to eight iron. It's a one piece forged club uh, in the true sense of the word. Then when you go from seven iron up to, it's either four iron or three iron, I'm not sure what this is available in. Then the speed foam injected in the same way as you do in the P790. So that little bit of uh, extra oomph packed in there, if, uh, if that actually is something that works, but it's there. So there's a slight difference. And then you go down to that pure forge end of the bag with the P730s and the Tiger Woods uh, blade. So quite a bit of difference in how these uh, are put together. And obviously they're put together in a different way to perform in different ways and do different things in terms of what you're looking for. So whether you're looking for feel, whether you're looking for help, whether you're looking for ball speed, help in terms of launch, ball speeds off the face. And then again, you've got that other element to consider is the ability to shot make, shape shots. And again, that shoves you down back to that blade end of the bag but some notable difference in how these three or four different categories of clubs have been put together. If you're new to the channel, I am the average golfer. I do plenty of this kind of thing. I test clubs out here. I try and get dry ball data wherever possible. I'm out on the course and get some real time testing. I also do a little bit of uh, traveling around in terms of course vlogs. So if you wouldn't mind considering hitting that subscribe button and if you enjoyed this one, hit that like button. Thank you. Right, I want to give you some dry ball data, and the dry ball data is taken from um, my previous, my initial testing. So it's not a case of I've hit all these again. This is my initial testing. And there'll be variables that are in there, but it certainly gives a guide as to what is uh, what I was able to achieve with each of them. Don't forget a massive difference in terms of the loft. We've got down the sim end, 28 and a half degree, seven iron, up to what is going to be the numbers that you see for the P760, which is, I think, 35 degrees. I'll check my notes. Yeah, it's... Uh, no, it's 33 degrees. 
Uh, so a considerable difference, almost five degrees there between uh, the SIM and, uh, and that of the P760. But here's the numbers in front of you now. P760, um, 107 ball speeds, you know, kind of low for, a, for, a, for a, I suppose it's a traditional seven iron, almost in terms of its loft. Um, spin number again where you'd want it to be around that sort of 6,000 revs average carrier 147 so for me a, a traditional seven iron in around that 150 mark is exactly where i'd expect it to be you then go into the sort of p790 ball speeds are incredible 123 um launching at 17.3 i didn't mention the launch on the 760 was 22.5 so a big difference in terms of the flight 6,000 spin, so it, 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 surprisingly enough, again, stronger lofted. This is 30.5 degrees now on the P790, and, and yet 6,000 revs of spin. An unbelievable 174 yards of carry, and arguably, like I said, you know, you're looking for something. Is that going to cause your issues down that lower end of the bag? You then go to the P730. That is lofted at uh, 35 degrees. 109 ball speeds, interestingly slightly higher than the P760. Chances are I'm having a bit of a better day. I'm hitting the ball a bit more out in the middle. Uh, the launch on it, 25 degrees, again, extremely high in terms of that ball flight, much more like the traditional. The interesting bit for me was the spin number. I mean, 5391, again, I'm just never overly keen on launch monitor spin data. I like to see what it does out here on the course. And a 156 carry, uh, just that extra bit of ball speed again, compared to that P760. And again, might be surprising that pure, pure blade performed in the seven iron at least a little bit better than it did that p760 there's always a contradiction in these numbers you see it's never as straightforward as this kind of uh, oh that's a blade it does this that's a game improvement iron it does this i don't buy into it the data is key to giving you a guideline as to what they can do and then get out on the course and that's where you see what real performance is the sim again 118 ball speeds um Lower ball flight 16.6, 62 spin, which was the really impressive number. But don't forget that's lofted at 20 and a half degrees and it was 163 carry. So even amongst those four sets of numbers, you can see the variables that are in there. And to me, what it does suggest is like I've just said, the important thing is, is to get out on the course if possible and get to test these irons. But certainly if not, test all the options open to you. Don't go in with that closed mindset of, this my game suits this iron because i don't think that's quite uh, the logic and it's certainly not the logic that we've just seen in that dry ball data it's right on line but it won't get there or it shouldn't get there ah do you know what that's not done too bad we're playing 160 here so again, don't forget dry ball data said this uh, seven iron, that was a P760, does uh, 147 on average. Well, it's just carried sort of close onto that sort of one, maybe to the flag, maybe it's a bit, uh, it, it's certainly top end of that sort of mid to top end of 150s. It's a bit cutty on that one. You'll get it on the camera on the back. It's gonna be, yeah, bunker right. But to be honest with you again, in terms of the distance it travels still in and around that sort of 160 the bit for me that surprises me is that out here on the golf course what i've seen is the p790 ball flight we're saying it launched at seven i'm playing seven iron here now it's saying it launches at 17.7 from memory i think and again the p760 was launching at 22. i'm not seeing that at all in terms of peak height anyway i'm not saying launch but peak height the p790 gets the ball really high in the air. That's the best ball out of the lot, and that's the sim. It's coming down close to the flag. Will it sit? Will it go in? It's an interesting one there to, again, you'll see from the way that bounced off the left-hand side, so we can't judge in terms of spin because it got a kick off the bank. But again, where it finished in terms of ball flight and distance traveled it's probably suggesting it did exactly what it did in terms of dry ball data but three different strikes three different ball flights i won't say launch angle three different ball flights and again each of them producing different things in terms of what you're looking for each of them got very different feel as well and i'll try and summarize all that well, it's a big question is what have I learned from all this? Well, the main thing I take from it is, is quite a simple one. There are seven irons within the tailor-made range and they each do a different thing. They 
they look very different, they perform different, they feel different, they sound different. So I think first of all, it's often criticised, I think mainly sort of Callaway and Taylor May for how many products they have in the range, but I think, you know, in this case, they're only small differences, but they do really separate each other in terms of a buying decision. Price wasn't a major difference between them all. I also seen that whilst you look at strong lofted irons compared to weak lofted, so 35 degrees down to 28 and a half degrees. Yes, obviously there are differences there, but I wouldn't be off put by either in terms of how it swayed my decision to buy a set of irons. The main point is this, you've got to get custom fit. You've got to try as many different irons as you can. Aesthetically, first of all, I think you've got to be drawn to a club that you like, and once you've got over that hurdle, then maybe just taking a few that you're not so keen on on the eye, but might just do a job, so don't dismiss them. The performance of each club has been really good. I mean, for me, out here on the course, if I'm being honest with you, the P760 probably performed more consistently in each area that I played it. The P760 performed best, and it is without doubt the best feeling out of these. The sim range definitely gives you that help and assistance. That's de that definitely that mass and bulk will give people confidence. And then you've got this P790 range. And for me, the reason that it always does particularly well is because it ticks a number of boxes. I think it looks very, very good. I think they've got not the feel of the Forge, but they've got a very good feel and sound to this club. In terms of where it sits, in terms of its loft and spin number, at least in terms of what dry ball data says it does. And what I've seen out on the course, it performs very well and that profile again sort of sits in between them all. So for me, I don't know TaylorMade's sales statistics, but for me, the P790 is that standout product that offers you a little bit of everything that you might look for from an iron. But once again, that is only my opinion and it doesn't matter to you whatsoever. It's just my idea on how you should look at these clubs and like I said, there's a big choice from TaylorMade. Make the most of it. The important thing, like I said, is get out there, try them yourself. And if you get the opportunity, ask your supplier, ask your fitter if you can go and take one of the irons or a couple of irons out on the golf course because it is where you see the true performance of a club. Right, that's me done. It's a stunning morning down here at Conway Golf Club. I'm going to carry on hitting a few more of these irons. And uh, as I asked earlier, if you have enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And maybe if you're not already, then consider hitting that subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you all very soon.